You're watching Escape Adult Hood Live, your number one source for long-lasting, fast-acting, physician-approved adultitis relief. On this episode, we're talking about fairy tales and embracing real beauty with dub girl, speaker, and author, Stacy Nato. Greetings and salutations, everyone. This episode is brought to you by people like Mackenzie Laren and James and Lee Rosenberg. Their membership in the Wonder Moon Society supports us in this work to fight adultitis. Thank you, guys. Yes, if you'd like to annihilate the adultitis in your life, learn more about the Wonder and Whimsy Society, or be among the first to know our newest offerings, please become an insider at escapeadulthood.com slash subscribe. Indeed. Happy Wednesday. Well, it's great to, great to be with you tonight. A we have tonight. A, uh, a really big show oh, for you tonight. We are uh, so excited. So excited about, about this one. Stacey being here. Oh my gosh, you guys are going I love her. Um, and we have some fun things at the end of the show. So stick around for that. We, we yes. hyped this up last week. We, we hyped up a little bit some shenanigans uh, from that I uh, partook in, <laughs> instigated. From and his shirt, his shirt is a foreshadow. Yeah, I, so if uh, you were here last week, you kind of know what we're talking about a little bit. Yeah, I spoke at Lambeau Field recently and uh, couldn't just let it lie. So... <laughs> Stay and, tuned and for Stacey's that. Stacy's kind of in the wings. We are Bears fans, Stacy. You may remember we are from Illinois. So for Jason to be in Lambeau Field speaking, this is a compromising situation. And there just had to be something that happened. Yeah. And there was. So. I know well enough not to announce during my speech that I'm a Bears fan. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, then they'll throw tomatoes at me. So I did something more covert. So we'll talk about that later. But... That's not why we're here. What no. we're here is to uh, is to welcome a very special guest. So let's get into that. Okay, Kim, what were you doing in the summer of two thousand five? Oh, I was quitting my teaching job mm, and jumping, really yeah, it. leaping into this full time. So that was a big year. Good. What was what big. was Stacy doing? Well, uh, in the summer of 2005, six women made national news when they appeared on a Times Square billboard dressed only in their underwear. Is that like everyone's worst nightmare? <laughs> I know, right? Wait, what? What? Why, why did that happen? Well, this is a dream. <laughs> While other nearby billboards featured featured actresses and supermodels, this one promoting Dove brand products promoted real women with real curves and the nation went wild. Dove's mission was to make more women feel beautiful every day by widening the stereotypical theme of beauty and by inspiring women to take great care of themselves. Suddenly, Stacy Nato, an industrial organizational psychology major. You Say know, that again. Uh, no, thank you. Industrial <laughs> organizational psychology major at DePaul University was thrust into the national spotlight. Wow. As one of the real women featured in the ad campaign, Stacy quickly emerged as a spokeswoman for the healthy body image. She appeared on the Today Show, CNN, Ellen, Dr. Phil, Tyra, and Oprah twice. Oh, my goodness. Since then, Stacy has committed her life and career to helping women feel great about themselves. Stacy lives in Chicago with her family. She works full time as a speaker, consultant, and coach to empower women everywhere. Stacy Nato, Yay! thank you so much for being with us today. How are you? Thank you. I'm I'm so excited to be here with all of you. I've been a fan of the show for quite a while, so thank you for having me. I'm fantastic. How awesome. are you all? And we're assuming you're a Bears fan. Is that a good assumption? You know, I'm originally from Michigan. Uh oh, so it might be even worse. Cause I like the lion. Oh, oh my. there's a bunch of Michigan people here tonight. So <laughs> my get condolences the on that, but there are a lot of Michigan. There's a big Michigan contingent. Well, maybe so. you could understand our frustration with being in a state that isn't your own sports team. So yeah. we can relate. I hear you. Yeah, absolutely can relate there. That's for sure. <laughs> well, you know, let's start off with the obvious. I'm sure you've heard this question a million times, but, but people who don't know, I, I, how did this opportunity with Dove come about for you? Um, yeah, it's just studying your industrial organizational <laughs> psychology and then all of a sudden, boom, Times Square billboard. <laughs> how, how does that happen? 
such a story. It's such a story. It's one of my favorite stories. So, you know, I was at this point in my life, what I would consider just sort of an average college student. I was going to school full time, working part time. I was president of a business fraternity at my campus. I was volunteering at a women's shelter across the street from campus and I was an RA. So I remember being in a position where I was extremely overwhelmed. <laughs> and you know those times in life where you're just like, keep everything afloat. I know how to just make everything sort of work and it's good enough. And that's kind of where I was. And I was scheduled to work at the part-time job. I was a receptionist at a salon. And so I was walking to work and it was about a three block walk from my apartment to the reception uh, job. And as I was walking, I noticed this woman who's trailing really close behind me. And I had brought my roommate with me. So her and I are walking together and I'm like looking over my shoulder and I'm like, what is going on? And this woman's getting closer to me. She begins to take notes and I, I'm getting a little bit freaked out. I'm like, what is happening? But I live in downtown Chicago at the time. If I stopped for every odd thing I always saw, I'd be stopping all the time. So I just kept walking. I ignored it <laughs> and kept going. So the woman follows me inside. She introduces herself. She says she's a talent agent and she offers me you know, a slot at this audition to come to a modeling audition. And I just remember looking back at her and being like, what are you talking about? I was a size 10. You know, not only was I not what every model looked like, I also, like I just explained, was overwhelmed. I had too much on my plate as it was. So it was one of those very quick, like, thanks so much, absolutely not moments. <laughs> and I went on with my shift, you know, the day went through and the woman had left her card and my roommate who had been with me took the card, called, pretended to be me made me an appointment to go to the audition and forced me to go. Oh my God. So I really do owe the entire situation to her because <laughs> she made me go and pushed me and encouraged me. And uh, I went and the rest is history. Oh my God. So yeah, that is great. That was great. Did, you, did, they, did your roommate find out right away what it was for? Like how, what, 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 what were you thinking when you heard about the idea? You were like, oh, this is actually really cool. I want to be a part of this. Or what, what was your thoughts when you heard what the yeah. actual job was this so at the beginning these were the years where you'd walk down to sh downtown chicago and people would be like offering you a free haircut and a free massage and mm -hmm. come get this free body scrub and you know you just kind of had built up walls to walk down the street yeah. so that was sort of my first reaction and then when we slowed down and she started explaining what it was all about i definitely reframed how i wanted to show up and so she really explained how it was about real people and real bodies and how this this campaign was going to be different in the way that it wasn't going to be airbrushed and retouched. And it was really going to be this celebration of how women do look in everyday life and how that's absolutely acceptable to also be in advertising. Once I slowed that down, once I really realized what the messaging and what it was about then I was all excited. Then I was ready to go. Then I was hopeful that I was going to be part of the experience. But it took that reframe for me to understand. But for me, it was about the mission. It was about helping, you know, the world reframe how we look at women in the media, but certainly more, most importantly, helping women look at themselves differently mm -hmm. and be more accepting of how they show up. Awesome. I think uh, one of the things I think we've talked about in the past that I was kind of I wanted to revisit a little bit is you and, and I, I wanted to call out Rachel. Uh, Rachel says, I remember those ads so well. I was in college at the time. And um, for, for people who don't know, I mean, this this definitely was a groundbreaking thing. I think now there's there's much more of that than there ever has been before. Yeah. But like remind people what a huge risk this was. Uh, I think you, I don't know who, if it was the, the the campaign manager or who it was you were telling me about that was like her, her job was over if this did not go well. Like what what was the the risk? What was the, the nervousness you all felt like as you were about to launch this to the world? Yeah. So I'll be very honest. I think the six of us were the least nervous of the crew <laughs> because frankly, we were beautifully naive. We had no idea this could potentially spark the complete wave that it did. Hmm. Now, like I have told you, Jason, the Dove team, you know, the executives, the PR company, they all had come over to us right after we had done 
been done taking all the pictures. So we took pictures for two days straight. It was 25 hours of shooting. 3,000 pictures were taken for the campaign. Eight made the cut. <laughs> so out of the 3,000 we took, wow. eight made it, which is always just a fun, crazy thing to understand mm -hmm. and know from the behind the scenes because I knew nothing about that until this experience. But, um, you know, right after we were done taking the pictures, they came over and they sat us down and they said, listen, we're really proud of this work and this these photos. And we have to be pretty realistic. We aren't positive how everybody's going to react. We are going to flood every major market with this ad. This is going to print in every women's magazine that goes to print, 90% of the men's magazines that go to print, and we don't know the reaction. You all have to be just ready for that. And I remember the six of us sitting there that night and just being like, okay. You know, we kind of all looked at each other. That's not exactly what we were expecting, but we were like, all right, we took a deep breath. We're like, let's do this. Let's change the way we have a conversation about women. Let's change the way we advertise. So I think, we were like, we're going to be in Cosmopolitan for two months and yay, we'll buy them all and then we'll go on with our lives. Like, I really think that's how it was. And for the executive team, they put everything on the line. You know, they are a true example, in my opinion, of like taking their power and using it for good. Because if it didn't work out, they wouldn't work in advertising anymore. Because one large blip in advertising world means you don't get to keep going. Mm -hmm. And so for them to take you know, the ability and the power that they knew they could have and to use it to change this conversation, I still will always, always be grateful to them for that. And I get to still work with the brand now today. And I can honestly say from such a, such a real space is like, they are just so authentic. They're so wonderful. They truly do care about the way we message and the way we talk about women and girls and now all humans, you know, we've gone all over the place now since 2005, but all humans and how, how they feel about themselves and their self-esteem. That's cool. Wow. That is yeah. amazing. I love that concept of you six, just kind of like, really, how would you have ever known? You know, it's almost like being on a reality show. We had a reality show winner, Luke Soderling was here with us a couple weeks ago. And it kind of reminds me of that same thing. The experience you guys had was kind of a reality show, hearing about all the, the TV appearances you made and, and all that. I'm sure the six of you got pretty tight. It's so true. It's so true. We always joke like... It, it, we used to joke, it's like the real world. <laughs> the six of us went on, a, went on a trip, you know, went on a mission and, and no one knew what was going to happen. And uh, I joke, whether we liked each other or not, we got close, but luckily we loved each other and we got really close. And mm -hmm. what was so cool about the group that did this, the six of us, is like everyone truly, truly believed in helping. And that's why I think sometimes interviewers or people will ask me, like, why do you think it caught fire like it did. A, to your point earlier, Jason, it was groundbreaking. You know, now it's different, but in 2005, this was the first of its kind. And two, or B, I think it was really that like, we authentically showed up for women. We did not show up to be in the magazine. We did not show up to get the free Gap cotton underwear. Like none of that was important. <laughs> it was like, we really want to change the conversation. And because that authenticity, authenticity really came through, I think that's why it was so well received. Hmm. Um, but yeah, the six of us, I'll never forget that moment. There are so many moments I won't forget, but that's one of them. It's just sitting there going, all right. What was the, the, the whirlwind like then once it did hit and was successful? What was that like? What was your mentality like? And and I guess this is sort of a second part. Maybe it's this whole different question, but like, I'm curious, like, was there a point where you're like, wow, we we really did change the conversation. Like, was there a moment you were like, we achieved what we set out to do? Yes. So the whirlwind was unbelievable because it was, it was a lot of like in uh, magazine interviews and newspaper interviews. So a lot of print. And then we did a lot of local news. Like I did a lot of stuff in Chicago and things like that. And then we got the Today Show call. And it was as if the national news was waiting for the first one to do the story mm -hmm. and then it just lit up. So once we got the Today Show call, which we were like, holy cow, here, you know, Today Show. So not only has no one been on TV before, now we're doing live national television. You know, I always say like, if you fall, trip, say something wrong, too late, <laughs> everyone <laughs> thought there's, there's a 10 second delay, that's all you get. <laughs> so um, I, I just remember thinking like, 
way to throw us in, way to really get us going there. And then that whirlwind was absolutely unbelievable. The stories I could tell you of us trying to get to these shows was just amazing. Um, I got booted off a flight on the way to the Today Show uh, because I was the last to book my ticket because many of these shows book very close to the dates, especially because as we great gained traction and popularity, well, then the show wants you on tomorrow because now the, the campaign's exciting. And so uh, I flew all night to the Today Show. I was on like, it was just, a, as we know as travelers now, it was an unbelievable travel story. I got there, landed, got into Manhattan, I think about 345, the car picked me up at 4.15 to take me to the show. <laughs> so I got there, right? The Ellen DeGeneres show called, I think like the day before at 3 p.m. I was on a red eye that night. So I had like an hour to pack my bag. It's just those kinds of whirlwind, amazing, cool, fun stories. But I think the moment I knew was the call from Oprah. Because when she was on air, she streamed in 111 different countries. I just knew that moment. And again, of course, it was such an honor to get an, like an Oprah show call. But deeper than that, all six of us just lost it because we were like, this is now going to become a complete shift. This is not an advertising campaign anymore. This is a conversation now. This is now going to happen at the dinner table between parents and kids and generations. And it, that's that's the moment mm -hmm. where I was like, OK, this is this is different. We just shifted something. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. What did you learn about yourself in that process? <sighs> I learned that my thighs look bigger than I ever expected <laughs> on billboards. <laughs> well, it's not Times Square. I mean, it's yeah. that adds 35,000 pounds, right? <laughs> exactly. It's exactly it. That's a little bit more than 10. Uh, <laughs> you know, I grew up fairly confident and I really had a lot of rough experiences. I've always identified curvy. I've always identified as somebody who's bigger than most. And why that mattered is because in seventh grade, I remember so well becoming so heightenedly aware of that hmm. and comparing myself constantly and feeling really crummy. And I remember most about stores I would walk into and none of the advertisements looked anything close to me. Hmm. And so in seventh grade, that meant that I made it mean I was the problem. Right. Nothing wrong with the clothes, nothing wrong with the th with everything with the brands. It was like it was me. I had to fit into this box. And if I didn't fit into this box, I'm a problem. So I learned that I had taken on a lot more than th of that than I ever realized as an adult. Mm. I also learned that I have an amazing support system and my parents are phenomenal and helped me really get through a lot of that in high school. But most most of all, I learned like this conversation is so important. It's important for me still to this day. It's important for the women I get the, the honor to work with. It's so important because body image is usually a symptom of some deeper self-worth, confidence and capability issues. And that is what I think I've learned the most is we can present any way we want, um, but having that authentic connection to us and who we are and how capable we are as humans, that's how I like hope all of us can show up because that's a different feeling. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I think, well, obviously then, you know, this, this experience led to what you do now where you're speaking, you're talking about body image, you're, you're helping men and women um, feel their best. I know that's like part of the, the passion too, is like, is everyone. Um, I know like you, you've talked about like the idea of like fairy tales and sometimes the, um, the messages we get, just all, all along, like what in your work of what you do, like, tell us a little bit about like what you do now and what is the, is there a really, is there a, a culprit? Is there a, 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 I hate to say like a bad guy, but like, what's, what's a, what's a common thing that you see a lot of people struggling with that you're constantly helping them deal with? That's a great question. I think it ties into the fairy tale thing, which is, what I would say I see consistently, whether it's in my one-on-one -on -one coaching practice, whether it's talking to people after a keynote, consulting for a brand or a company, it's like, I just watch so many people hand over their power, just give it away. And it's maybe they're giving their power away to the fitting room because their jeans don't fit right and they're upset. 
maybe they're giving their power away to the coworker who they don't get along with, who's driving them nuts. <laughs> maybe they give their power away to their children or their partner or whatever it may be. And it's just, I find it so painful to watch so many of us, myself included some days, just hand it all over and just give it away as if it's like, you know what? I don't matter. Everything else is more important. Just here it is. So I talk about power in a really like physical, interesting way, but I talk about power like it sits in our gut. And I always imagine a mason jar, which I don't know why it's a mason jar, but it is. And I always think about this mason jar sitting in our gut. And I always explain, we want at least 70% of that mason jar to be full of our own power at all times. And 30-ish percent goes out. And what that means for me or what I coach people to, to think about or offer them is this idea of, you know, who's on your team? Like when I talk to my young people about confidence, I call this their esteem team. And it's like, those are the people that have your back, that love you fiercely, that always want the best for you, that also might call you out sometimes, or might also check you a little bit. And those are the people that I want to give a little bit of that power to. You know, that's my husband, that's my parents. Like, but the thing is, is it's got to be a two-way street. That means you got to get a little back from them. And it's got to be that mutually powered, respected relationship. So for me, it's that. And I think it comes back to sharing the fairy tale a little bit where it's like, we've built this fairy tale that somebody is coming to save, whether it be a person, whether it be the next fad diet, whether it be the next job, that one will be better. We're just kind of always waiting for the next step and the next fairy tale. And we build that fairy tale up so much, we miss the present moment and we miss what could be great right here. Yeah. The power within yourself rather than looking yeah. for yeah, the outside. Mm -hmm. so interesting. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've we've got uh, two two daughters, uh, and that scares me a little bit. Um, I'm curious what advice you have for uh, for parents raising young girls in our current culture and boys too. But I obviously, like the you know the, the, the both have their challenges in terms of yeah. what society says we need to be. I, I pull up here. Uh, Paul had a really good comment. He said, women have it so much harder than men, but I was the fat kid growing up and get it. We need to make sure our kids feel good about themselves regardless of their shape. But speaking about yeah. the, you know, the Dove campaign and, 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 and that, like what, what advice do you have for parents? Oh man, if we have another three hours, I could go through all of it, but let me think of like the kind of top, um, if we get to the very basics, I think that it's important for us to be having very open conversations about bodies. It's really important for us to be having open conversations and modeling what it looks like and feels like for us to show healthy movement and nutrition in non-conventional ways, to watch our language around those things. Um, one very simple thing, but it's it's often overlooked, is like not demonizing any foods, not making any foods necessarily wrong or bad, um, not rewarding with food, right? And and don't get me wrong, there are certain there are certain personalities and certain children. For example, my son, he's six years old. He could care less about food. So to use a little bribe with M and M sometimes works beautifully, <laughs> right? But I can read in him that that's probably not going to become a pattern that he'll like reward with food one day, just because I can kind of see that in him. So it's like those kinds of things. Again, the conversations we're having, but I think in the in that conversation bucket, the biggest thing to do is to normalize talking about how we feel and to normalize the feelings we're feeling in our body, how foods make us feel, how healthy movement makes us feel over how we look is really important. Mm -hmm. One thing I think this campaign did that hadn't really been done before is normalize like talking positively about the body, right? And talking openly about it. So many women came up to us and were like, gosh, I felt this way for years, but I've never said anything about it. I thought it was just me. So when we were able to open that dialogue, it was like, no, I mean, I didn't, I didn't want women to bond over that, but they did because they realized so many were going through it. Mm -hmm. So that feeling of not being alone, I think, really letting all things be okay. So many parents I talk to or even coach, you know, if their daughter or even son will say something about their body or say, I feel fat or I look fat, they'll immediately be like, stop, no, you don't. Oh my gosh, you're so pretty. And what tends to happen is your, your, your interest and your intention are so solid, 
But what tends to happen is that human or that child is like, you have to say that you're my parent. Mm. And so what tends to work even better is tell me why you're feeling that way today. Is today Mm. different than yesterday? Is something going on? Is this a conversation happening inside of your head a lot? And you're just kind of getting really neutrally curious and you're able to ask those different questions and have that dialogue that goes back and forth. And it's totally okay to be like, you know what? Sometimes I have those days too. What's important is not to focus all day on it. Mm -hmm. I always say like, throw yourself a little pity party. I call it the squash it method. Throw yourself that little few minutes, let yourself have at it, but then take that deep breath and forward focus on what's going on in your day. Because if you let it take over, that's when it starts to become a perpetual pattern. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love the idea of like being able to talk even to yourself, not just your kid of like, why am I feeling that way today? And like, what's different about today than yesterday? Neutral curiosity. What an interesting combination of words there. Instead of it being like, you know, uh, shameful questioning or uh, accusatory. It's just like, stay real chill, right? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I love chill parenting. That's exactly it. Yes. (laughs) Jennifer yeah. Tackett, can you put her um, comments up? It was a little bit up this there. Right yeah, this is pretty cool. So Jennifer says, I remember doing a bulletin board around that time as an RA about women in advertising. Thank you for the conversation. How cool yeah. is that from one that's RA really to cool. another? Yeah. Um, that's amazing. Right? Jody says, thanks for the powerful reality check. I needed those reminders. So that's, that's great. And then uh, Catherine says, young people, not sure if average, end up with eating disorders because of their negative body thoughts. And I I can't imagine that's not absolutely true, right? Yeah. Yeah. We have a high, you know, we have a high percentage of young people Um, And what's really interesting about the statistics that I won't bore you with is uh, a lot of young people, especially participate in disordered eating or disordered behavior and don't necessarily bucket themselves in eating disorders. And so we probably have even a larger number of people participating in those behaviors or even just dabbling in those behaviors again, because of your thoughts. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, fact checking your inner critic is something I talk Mm -hmm. about quite a bit, which you kind of brought up. Jason is like really check in with that, that critic and, of course, I offer tools of how to quiet that critic, but like checking in with that critic, getting to know that critic a little bit, it's important. We often want to push that critic away, but it's like, let's get to know it a little bit. Why Why are you there? Why are you saying that stuff? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's addressing it, right? Instead of just yeah. being in denial about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But Be- before we get any farther, I know um, I want to just throw out to, if you have any questions for Stacy, this is a great time to be able to throw those in the comments. Um, and we'll be sure to to grab a couple of those at the end. Yeah. So. Well, as you're as you mentioned, you you do coaching. Um, I imagine that gives you a really interesting perspective, uh, getting really intimate with people in terms of, you know, it's one thing to to speak on a stage and hear people come up to you afterwards, but then to really dive into where people are feeling and thinking. And I, I can only imagine that's given you even more knowledge of what's common. Um, and what, what root problems there are and consistent challenges there are. Like if there, if if you could wave a a magic wand to change one thing about our culture that you think would have the biggest positive impact around the subject of self-esteem and, and the stuff we're talking about, what, what would it be? I think that that's a hard and this is like Larry King. We're asking the hard (laughs) questions tonight. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, she's been on Oprah. She can handle it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, think so. I think I got this. I think I got this. Um, uh, I think I think I would give a magic wand or wave the magic wand to get everybody to connect back to the capability they already have. One thing that's unique about what I teach is there is no growing confidence and capability. There's no finding it. There's no like when I lose the 20 pounds, once I get this job, once my kid acts differently, like there is none of that. It's actually there already. And you're you're not, you're taught to disconnect from it. You aren't born disconnected from it. That just, it just isn't, it's a universal spiritual law. Like you are just born in complete love, right? (laughs) And to get away and disconnect from that, like that's the human experience. And so I think it would be just to remind people to lean in just even 5% more to how capable they are. Hmm. 
I think I think so much of this ties into the capability of who we are and how we are. I mean, look at what we've all done the last two years of our lives. You know, there's so many of us that are like, if you would have told me two years ago that I was going to be on the other side of this and still be alive and, and fairly well, <laughs> there's no way I would have taken that bet. And so many of us are still standing. So many of us figured it out. And so it's like, find those places where you can remind yourself you're so capable. You're so mm. capable. We can do hard things. Yeah. I love that. Absolutely. That's Paul, awesome. Paul wants to know, is that campaign still active or has there been a reboot? Yeah. So the campaign itself is still active. It's, um, I, I would say what's still active specifically in the wording, if you go to like Google it or something, is the self-esteem education fund. That is something that we still work diligently towards. And that is where proceeds of every sale from Dove goes to a fund. And then there's a group of educators that, that travel and educate young people. We have national partnerships with like the Girl Scouts and, and different Boys and Girl Scouts, um, Boys and Girls Clubs of America, excuse me. And so we have different places that we do that. What's still alive and well is the social mission team of Dove. And there's an entire team dedicated to that. And so there's all sorts of really cool things coming up that, um, you know, to be annoying, I can't really talk about, but <laughs> there's so many things launching next year and it's never going to stop until every single person on this planet feels really confident in themselves. Mm -hmm. So there's so there's kid care, there's men care right now. We've gone into all the different places. So the social mission team is the largest team of the brand. Um, they really care about how they're presenting and what they're helping change the or what conversations are helping change. So yes, mm -hmm. it is alive and well. All right. Well, here's a harder one. Uh, Jennifer says shame is learned. Can it be unlearned? Yeah, that's a great and hard question, Jennifer. Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> I do think it can be unlearned. I, I have full faith it can be more. I, I might even pivot to say more than unlearn completely. It's like practice bringing the shame to the light so we don't give it so much power. So for me, it's, it's less about completely unlearning things. It's more about really practicing the muscle to reframe it so that we can really not give it so much power. To me, so much of what we do is give the negative stuff all the power. And if we can start to shift away from that, I think a lot, lot changes. That's a great point. Great point. T tell me a little bit about this uh, confident, connecting to confidence masterclass you have going on. I think uh, Jenna might be able to put the uh, the link to this in the um, in the chat, but we'll also put it in the show notes. Tell us about that in case people want to be involved and, and, uh, jump into your world a little bit more. Yes, please join us. It'll be, um, next Wednesday actually. And it's going to be all about, you know, the, the tangible reasons and ways, well, the reasons why we want to get back to our confidence and capability, but the tangible ways and how to do so. So this is my first live masterclass. I purposely wanted to talk about it tonight because that means I absolutely have to do it now. <laughs> um, and I'm really excited for it. But, you know, the digital world is a little bit new to me. So the masterclass in that space, um, it's, it's, I'm learning it and I'm really excited to learn it. So the class will be very specific. My entire theory is about, again, reconnecting back to who you are, how capable you are. And the tangible tools I offer all are designed to be done in 10 minutes or less per day. I am not looking to give you a ton more to do. I'm not looking to overwhelm you. I'm looking to make you feel differently and more connected to your confidence through just that practice every single day. And so that's what the, the class will be up all about. Um, I welcome you to come. We're going to have a lot of fun. Cool. That sounds amazing. Yeah, Jenna, drop that yeah. in the link. Again, Sweet. if you're watching this afterwards, it's in. it'll be in the show notes. Um, it's a. It, it's free, right? I think you said it was a it's free. free. Yeah. Cool. yeah, that's amazing. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Michelle wow. or Elle says, uh, I am a Dove girl, love the products and what such a company does for communities. Mm. So I'm that's sure amazing. she's not alone. Um, all right, well, I have one last question and it's kind of out of left field, but it's one of my favorite questions to ask. Um, what food, sound, or smell most reminds you of childhood? Food, sound, or smell most reminds me of childhood. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> this is so weird. <laughs> we like that. That's, that's the one that's sticking in my head, so I'm going with it. 
Um, in the house we grew up in, we moved when I was 14, but that first house we grew up in had a closet and this closet had a smell that was like a very odd mix of like paint, lavender, and like Tide, original <laughs> powdered Tide. And it's such a weird scent. It takes me immediately back to that hallway, immediately back to such good memories in that home. It was right next to our, my brother and I's playroom. So it was a very mm-hmm. like big location in the home. And this is very weird, but there was an air freshener years ago. They've discontinued it, can't find it anywhere, that had that similar scent. And I bought them out of house and home. Like I, when they discontinued, I looked for them on eBay. Like it was like, it was such a solid, happy memory, which is weird because it was a closet, but it just had that, that memory. And I think the scent was literally like fresh linen lavender or something. So it made sense with the lavender and the tide. But anyway, that would probably be the one. And now I don't smell it anymore. I have to figure out a way to mm-hmm. make it happen uh, organically, I guess. Right. <laughs> one day you'll just be walking somewhere in a store or something. Yep. You just there smell it. And you're like, oh my gosh, what is it? What does that smell? Do you, yes. Do you think the closet had those things in it? Like, was there or yeah. Okay. I can remember at least the tide. So I'm guessing the right, re- you know, this is a great question, Kim, because I've never like gone back and asked my parents. I need now I will because of our conversation. But yeah. yes, I know at least it had tight in it. So I have to, I'm sure the rest of it was in there. The lavender right? it was kind of a there somewhere. Yeah. 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 I love that. Yeah. Jenna put up a uh, new air freshener, Stacy's childhood closet, <laughs> like the new Yankee candle scent. <laughs> yes. I love that. I'm going to get, I'm going to call them up and see if they'll let me get into their lab and start. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> well, you know, and I can't, you know, I think of Dove, I think of different scents and stuff. So maybe there's a new connection with the Dove line, you know, that there could be like a, a custom product for yeah, you. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that's a really good point, actually. I'll call them tomorrow too. I know. So <laughs> you good lavender. Me, you know, I mean, you have me, you know, yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, Stacy, this was wonderful. Thank you for taking the time to chat with us. I know everyone uh, appreciates the, the truth bombs you dropped and the perspective that you shared. Uh, would love to talk more and more about some of the weird stories you have, but uh, thank you for taking the time uh, tonight. Yes, and, uh, we appreciate it. This is going to be a good show to watch with our kids and start some of those conversations, like you said, about this whole subject and let it be comfortable and not not have that awkwardness that tends to happen so yeah absolutely such a pleasure to be with you all thank you for having me thank thanks stacy take care all right everybody check out stacynato.com that was uh that was also in the uh in the show notes as well Isn't she wonderful? so awesome that's one of my favorite things is to bring amazing uh, people that we get to know along the journey and just introduce them to you guys. And now it's like, now you run with it. And she does coaching, one-on-one coaching, of course, speaking. If you know of anyone who, um, I, I'm sure all of you have a list in your head right now of like ways that Stacy can help someone. So, um, and ourselves, right? Yep. Yep. So, very cool. Very good. All right, let's move on. We got a couple, we got, we got some more cool things in this show. So stick around. And now a word from our sponsors. <clears throat> all right next week oh, next it's, week it's huge you guys i guess i did <laughs> <laughs> this is a big deal and honestly i can't believe it's yeah baby yeah. <laughs> <laughs> next wednesday i mean i hope you're kind of planning for something special maybe some special kind of nachos in the tracy household or maybe tots tots you know yeah. like tot night what can um, people expect kim that's a good question. <laughs> well, I, I mean, are we going to be dressed up? We should talk about this. Maybe we should I was, talk about I right was going to be in my underwear. I was going to take a cue from from Stacy and oh, just um, let's see. I'm going to be confident about it. <laughs> That's uncalled for. It's very uncalled for. So yeah, we're at, at, next week is what? Oh, I thought there was. A quick I'm comment. laughing at. Oh. <laughs> We're up in the ante because maybe some of you who are kind of new to the show are like, what's gallery night? We did this last year uh, about the same time of year. It was born out of wonder night, which was a three year annual at the time in person, fancy, swancy kind of night um, of art and storytelling and inspiration that we kind of moved virtual. I don't know why we moved it virtual, but no, maybe don't you guys recall. Don't recall. Uh, but now it is going to be, of course, on our live show next Wednesday night. And it's, it is, let it, let me just say, 
it's going to be an emotional evening. And when I say emotional, I mean inspirational, but also, um, I don't know, Jason's going to take us on a journey that I think is going to be pretty healing and uh, is cathartic the right word? Yeah, cathartic? That, that could be, yes. Um, that could be a, a good describer of it. And if nothing else, you're going to leave feeling inspired, hopeful, ready to dream big again, if or to just go after that dream that you know you, you got, you know? Um, so I don't know. It's... What do you have to say about it? Well, I the, one of the big things about it, which is different than last year, is I've been working on a new art form and have put together uh, a film uh, that tells the story of these nine paintings that I did uh, last year, or this year, I guess I should say, this mm -hmm. past year, and um, tells the story of how we, a 20-year dream that we had that we thought was dead about 20 million times and how it came together in a pretty miraculous way. And uh, I think there's a lot of lessons in it that uh, everyone can probably relate to. Um, whether you have a big dream, don't have a big dream, uh, feel like it's dead in the water, like whatever. I think it's kind of a, it's a, it's a interesting look back at the last 18 months uh, for all of us. And I've really enjoyed the idea of like, storytelling in a new medium with words and images and paintings and music and combining it all together. I mean, I am certainly not uh, Martin Scorsese or uh, Quentin Tarantino, but it's been it's been a really cool uh, to dabble and tinker with this new artistic meeting, medium. So I'm excited for you to see it. Um, Kim has seen about half of it. Yeah, it's kind of got like a documentary uh, Discovery Channel kind of feel to it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Not quite, but it's... Um, I'm not like, you know, super savvy on film uh, debuts or anything like that. But I definitely think it'll be kind of neat for you guys to see his artistic expression in this form. So, um, so it'll be neat. And of course it kicks off an auction, which you may have guessed, but, uh, that's going to be a fun part of the night as well with some showing off some items. Do we yeah, have a couple a of shows uh, tonight? Hildy asks, will the show be available afterwards? Mm, good question. Uh, like the regular Wednesday night show. And yes, that the show and the actual film will be available afterwards, but we've got yeah. a couple things that are kind of fun. Uh, in this auction, some one-of-a-kind items. Things have been showing well. up at the, on the front uh, porch, which So we is made awesome. a really, like a fleece blanket. Look uh, at this little guy. It says, oh, little darling. Isn't that so uh, cute, you guys? I love it. It's so soft. I thought this would be a really cool little baby blanket, oh, although it's bigger. It's pretty it's big, kind of but, big. But, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a good, a little it's a good spread. cute one. And then there's a, a, that's a fleece one. Then we have a woven blanket will be another one of the oh, uh yeah these always turn out items. so nice we do yeah. these this is we like, do this magic like once a year for us because honestly you can only print one we don't this stock is. these in our store these are kind of like one of a kind so high priced items sure here yeah. we go okay uh but this is like <laughs> magic to me which direction are we go oh it's upside down oh no that's, that's right okay uh so yes. isn't here that so comes beautiful the sun and the, the colors sun. are i don't know if the colors could be appreciated through our lighting here, but we put this on the couch as soon as it showed up in the light and it was just, the colors just popped off of there. It's pretty cool to, to think an oil painting transformed into thread. It's, uh, <laughs> it's one of my favorite things. So right? uh, there are uh, a number of uh, one of a kind auction items. There Ooh, will be some limited oh, edition prints, question. things like that. That uh, was actually of, a really good question. One of Lucy's hats. <laughs> Yeah, well, I don't know if we can afford them. She just she just <laughs> finished you you and Kara's hat, so uh, she'll be updating you on that. So anyway, but yes, we have some very very fun items to share, and it'll be a couple day auction. We won't. We decided not to end the auction like at midnight this year. Yeah, so we, you're we welcome, are, you guys. It's gonna be like an ending time of like during the day or something. Yes. Right? So so please check us out next Wednesday, November seventeenth, seven forty five p.m. Central Time. Uh, we're looking forward to it. We hope you will join us. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. She has an art degree, too, in fact. The pottery she makes, beautiful. She has what it takes to make a solid living from her craft. Instead, she tends a bar and works part-time on the assembly line for a manufacturing company.
I've been thinking a lot about what Jeff Savilico said in an interview we had recently on Escape It Allhood Live. He's an award-winning Las Vegas headliner, entertainer, speaker, and MC. He told us that when he speaks to young people, one of the questions he, get a- he gets asked the most is, who discovered you? And after a brief pause, his answer is, me. And it's true. If you listen to the interview, and I recommend you do, you'll hear Jeff describe the lengths he went to in order to find success in one of the most difficult environments in show business. It's an inspiring tale of grit, persistence, and ingenuity. Yes, he had help. He had partners. But he picked himself. Jeff believes one of the downsides of the proliferation of shows like America's Got Got Talent and The Voice is that kids growing up watching the shows expect that getting discovered is the ticket to success. It's not. In reality, you aren't discovered. There are no big breaks. At least least they aren't required. There's no singular event that will cause or prevent your success. You win by increments. The reason my pottery-making friend isn't living the life of her dreams is not because she didn't get discovered. It's because she didn't make the follow-up call to the pottery store owner to ask to cover some of his hours in exchange for some shelf space to sell her wares. She didn't do enough art fairs in the sweltering summer heat to build up a client base one customer at a time. She didn't start an Instagram account to display her beautiful creations and the process for making them. Either she didn't want it bad enough, or she erroneously believed that the art degree was the final step on the journey, or she expected someone to discover her and magically grant all her wishes. Maybe it's a little of all three. Regardless, it's a shame. Now, it's not difficult to make an average living in an average career working for an average company. But if you want to do something remarkable with your life, or if you have a dream that doesn't quite fit the mold of average, well, that requires you to pick yourself and spend your days accumulating little breaks. Or as artist and writer Molly Crabapple reflected, I've never had a big break. I've just had tiny cracks in this wall of indifference until finally the wall wasn't there anymore. A college degree might be a stepping stone, a ticket you need to play the game, but it's not the end of the line. And if your dream matters to you, you mustn't wait for C-list celebrities to validate you, politicians to save you, or gatekeepers to let you in. Stop waiting to be discovered. Pick yourself. Make your own way. Win by increments. I love this message because I think the the inches add up quick, mm-hmm. right? Even though sometimes it takes a long time to go an inch. Yes. But when you look back, you're like, look how far I've come, right? Yeah, you hear this again and again. From this people. is a classic, like one step at a time thing. But right. I think about that with what Stacy was saying earlier about the power that we have within ourselves and that we're kind of like the fairy tale mentality, right? Where we're waiting for some prince or some fairy godmother to come into our life and make everything better. Or we're waiting for that magical day when finally we'll be good enough. And I love what she said is like, basically she said, you're already good enough. You already have everything you need inside of you to be awesome, to go after that thing you're, you're dreaming about. And that constant looking outside of ourselves is, uh, is kind of a trap. And it, it uh, leads us astray to think that we have to have someone else tell us we're enough, tell tell us that we're ready um, or that we need someone else to give us permission to start. And uh, that's just not the case. I mean, I love that, that what that artist said about like tiny little cracks in the wall of indifference. And that I think like I look at our career and how far we've come and so many dreams that have come true, but they're, they're really, there was a, there was a lot of little moments. There wasn't like this big, like, Oh my gosh. And then that was the day everything changed. Like, Mm -hmm. I think the day that everything changed was when we decided we're doing this mm-hmm. and we weren't going to give ourselves an out. It was like, we're just doing this. I do no admit what. though, I think for the first seven years or eight years, I thought a big break was what we needed. Yeah. Yeah. We looked for right? it. We, we looked and we, we tried waited, and we, we tried, we tried to manufacture mm-hmm. that and, or, you know, create that or whatever. Um, but then after a while you realize that it's working without it. 
and you just kind of let that go. Yeah. Right. Well, it's kind of funny because we always thought of like, oh, if we could just get on Oprah. <laughs> and here we just we had we just talked to someone who's on Oprah twice right. and it was a big deal. Yeah. But she still she like she said, I, it didn't help her figure out virtual didn't right. help her like right. start her business magically and do all of the all. little things. It's not it's not all of it. Like right. those little things help. Those little things make a difference. And and sometimes they come and sometimes they don't. But if you're just waiting for that moment, <laughs> Yeah. You're you're missing out. So please don't don't bury what you have uh because you're you're waiting for some Prince Charming to come along or fairy godmother to wave her magic wand. You 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 have what it takes to make it happen. Okay you guys, let's do something fun tonight. Let's draw. Get your crayons, your colored pencils, your markers, your pencils. Uh, I, I want some. I want everyone here to grab a, something and and participate in this. It's all gonna right? be a fun one tonight. Uh, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start with um, with two lines, straight up and down. All right, like that. And then we're gonna draw uh, two more lines, but these are going to be slightly slanty. So we'll do a slanty one on this side and a slanty one on that side. All right. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a, a, a circle up here. Mm. All right. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a line over the top of those original lines. We drew a straight line, just like this. Okay. And then we're gonna draw a, a, Another one at the bottom. Close that one off. Okay. And then I'm going to draw another line underneath that that's the same length as the line I just drew. Jason takes you on quite a journey. You really do a good job of uh, when I'm looking at the sketch here. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to we're going to connect these Steven up here. SS Enterprise. Hmm. All right. Interesting. And then what we're going to do is we're going to draw another horizontal line that kind of cuts these original lines in half. All right. Now, next step, draw a little line right here. Give it some, some thickness here. And then I'm going to draw another line like that. Okay. All right. And uh, then we're going to draw little, little ovals there. there and yeah, we got, we got people there coming in here got now. It. it was tricky so tonight. We got this little, little uh, rebel, rebellious bonbon is what I, what I <laughs> think of this. So we're going to draw they all? some little, uh, little eyelashes like that. It was kind of that like eyes closed, kind of like not a care in the world, a little, a little smile here. And then we're gonna draw some some arms, kind of this confident. I'm just gonna pull a little confident little walk. This is gonna this She's might so okay, yeah, you can see it. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if our little bubble is cutting it off. And then I, I like this little touch here to kind of give it a little personality, this little uh curly Q here. Mm, that is cute. That one has it too, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, and then we can draw the other candies in the box. So we're gonna make sure we leave one empty. We can just draw, you could either do, draw more um, circular round ones like this, like little half mm -hmm. circles, or you can do kind of like a more of a square, kind of a rounded mm -hmm. square. So we'll do that on a couple of them. What's the brand I'm thinking of that we always had in our house around Christmas? Fannie Mae. No, with the W. Is it something samplers? What? Whit Whitman? Whitman's maybe? Whitman. Whitman. That could be. Samplers. Yeah. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to just add a little uh, little details here. So those, they're going to put a little line right here in the corner to give it that 3D oh, yeah. that box, right? And then we can... Uh, we can color these in and this this is what this is like one of my favorite things is to be able to give you guys a start on this and then see where where the creativity comes in so the creativity comes in and how you want to decorate these 
these bonbons, these candy, <laughs> candy pieces. Paul right? wants to know if the swirl is caramel or chocolate. Well, there you go. That's right? where the, it's that's, your choice. that's up to you, what Paul. What would you prefer? Right? So we're gonna do some different, uh, do some darker chocolate here. I love Julie. She knows that caramel is always square. <laughs> right? It's true. It's true. You never find caramel in the round ones. I know Kara's saying I'm craving chocolate now. Mm, yeah. Sorry. Sorry about that. Let's see. Should we do what we should we give some love to white chocolate maybe? Uh, not the biggest. Fan. Ironically, <laughs> it's not chocolate, white chocolate, but it's um, for some reason it jumps in and a little gitter in around the chocolate <laughs> love, you know. <laughs> All right, and so then again, well, here comes chocolate. where we get some creativity. So I like Paul's idea of the uh, little caramel. Mm -hmm. Make this little guy a little caramel look, and then maybe we've got some <laughs> of, eating some, chocolate right now. Some uh, right now. pink I... scribblies there. Ooh, that's adorable. All right, mm -hmm. and then maybe this guy's got some little Lushless glitter sugar. things. Um, what else? What did I do on that one? Oh, a little swirly. Here's a question. When I was little, I hated dark chocolate. Like if someone, you know, if that was part of the mix, I'd be like, oh, too bitter. Right. But now that's all I want. Is that a thing? I mean, has others experienced that? Like, I can well, it's barely like your, your eat chocolate. Palate has grown up a little bit. Is that what it is? Well, I want to know if it's like that. Yeah, that typically is. Uh, do most people start with milk chocolate and then only want dark chocolate, or has that only been my path? Because I can That's barely eat milk chocolate unless it's like a Snicker bar or like Twix or something that has other things going on, or of course my beloved Three Musketeer. <sighs> Um, a woman thing. Okay, that's, Elsa's. That's I garbage. know. It kind of feels like that. Totally, Kim. I'm the same way. Okay, Martha says. Yeah, I'm. Yeah. I can only, mm -hmm. you know, yes. eating some of the uh, Halloween candy recently. I'm like, ugh, this processed milk chocolate. I'm very. And maybe it's the quality the of milk chocolate. I don't know. If you get like a better quality, like a Dove chocolate, is that going to be better? Yeah, I don't speaking know. Speaking of Dove. Giradelli. Right? You know, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, so Julie Brown says, no, I still prefer milk and white. Dark chocolate is the last resort. Okay. So right. it's not all, um, but yeah, Jen Dritter says love dark chocolate now as an adult. So maybe it's just more of the fact that as kids, most kids prefer not dark, dark. I mean, mo most kids will eat chocolate no matter what it is, yeah. but, um, well, it's mo a lot of times it's more expensive, so you don't waste the good stuff on kids. It's like it's anything true. in life, but right? dark chocolate with caramel, like a Girardelli kind of a caramel square kind of thing. Oh, can we, uh, can we go back to the drawing lesson? No. Or is that, is that cool? <laughs> uh, so hopefully you were following along as I added in shading as Kim was talking. I couldn't really butt in. Uh, oh, you can put a little, uh, good. A little highlight here, maybe. Let's make it this a little lighter. This is a lighter. good conversation. I appreciate having this. A uh, little shiny highlight. Maybe I'll do one on a little reflected light on this side. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that little white guy needs a little. Uh, what kind of what kind of accoutrement should I put on him? Uh, like coconut. How would you do coconut if it was like a little? If it was already white. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> might just make a little. Uh, like a little. Little flex. There you go. I love uh, Christie's comment. I love doc ch Dove chocolate much tastier than Dove soap. Yeah, well, that's true. That's true. <laughs> did you cuss a lot when you were little? How did you know that, Christy? <laughs> you know? know that Christmas story of like Life Boy and the <laughs> connoisseur, the different kinds. So yeah. there you go. There's a renegade, uh, rebellious bonbon uh, mm -hmm. who is picking himself. And maybe that's part of what we need to have in here as well is that. Is that little that reminder? Little statement. I know um, it might be a little hard to see on our back art that that's what that says, but it does say pick yourself. This is an oldie but a goodie, you guys. We were actually talking about it at dinner and Lucy was like, which one is that? I'm like, yeah, this is maybe, I don't know, six, seven years old, this piece of art. Uh, yeah. So, I didn't even have a print of this. I had a Many of you out, may so. not know this piece of art. Um, so very cool. Yeah. Thanks for playing along. We can't wait to see yours. Send it in to KJ at escapeadulthood.com. Yes, please do. We got a few from oh, uh, the F dog. This was your uh, lesson from a few weeks ago. Yeah, that was, I regret. I wish I could do that night over because we were really distracted with the foils and whatnot, but you guys pulled it through. I mean, this the teaching side of that was a little rough, and Mary Beth thought it was like. It's so not as cute. easy as it looks. Well, 
Oh, uh, then last week we did the we did well. Jennifer always takes it to this the next so level. Cute. She's got the little tiger in there. I love it. Little and baseball. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. Detroit Tiger fan. And then Steven, the crack of the bat, like the multicolor, yeah, that turned out really lightning nice, going Steven. on. So please, what I want to see what you drew tonight. I don't. This is not a, a popularity contest. You've it's seen not a my beauty F-dog, pageant. You guys. I just want to see pageant. you guys having fun with it. I want to see the creativity of your your chocolates mm-hmm. and what what you go with it. So please uh, bring that along. And uh, all right, well we gotta we gotta give a little bit of our we teased it at the yes. beginning. Yes, and Kate is here with us tonight. So bear with us, Kate. Um, Apologies in advance. <laughs> For any, <laughs> we, you know we love you and Bella. We know yeah. we love you. This this is good spirited, and I and I I'll preface it by saying, uh, it wasn't it wasn't a great day when the Packers beat us and Aaron Rodgers screamed into the crowd, "I own you." <laughs> Uh, Holy to, nightmare! To the entire Bears fandom, and the thing that hurts the most most about it is he's not wrong. All right, that's. <laughs> That's where, you know, this comes from. So uh, we have to take our victories where we can. And so I did my part to give a little little boost to my to my side. Uh, so I was speaking in Lambeau Field. I wasn't on the field, <laughs> but in the, uh, the club I level. I let people on that. No, in the no. club level, they have uh, conference rooms and they have different meeting rooms and things like that. So I've spoken there a few times and uh, I, I thought it would be kind of fun to... Um, I don't know, like, do something for the team, right? For the Bears? For the Bears. For the Bears, yeah. 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 Mainly for that moment. I mean, I, I am not as big into sports, many of you know that. And so when that moment happened with Aaron Rodgers, and I, I was kind of analyzing it with Jason. I'm like, man, you know, how do, how do, are people really going to be upset about this? And Jason's like, the Bears know it's true. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's the hardest part yeah. is that it hurt really He's hard. Not, there's no lie there. Yeah. Um, so but, anyway, so what I came up with, and, and here's what I believe, is I believe the times, they are changing. And Aaron Rodgers, still very good. He's getting up there. All right. He's, he's, uh, these he's, are facts. These he's, aren't he's, opinions. He's getting up into the <laughs> senior citizenry. Even though of we're lowering football. our age by yeah, the day. He's younger than me, yeah. <laughs> but he's a senior citizen in football terms. And so who knows how many years he has left? Who knows if we'll be bit with the Packers next year? But the fact remains Chicago's got a pretty dang good young quarterback that's on the rise. And this season, frankly, that's what I'm talking is. About. All about the development of Justin Fields. We we know we're not going anywhere this year. It's all about how good is this guy, and he he's practice. looking better and better and better every week. So we're very excited about him. So I I made a little drawing of Justin Fields with my pop so culture people <laughs> style, and it says Winter is coming to Green Bay. Little Game of Thrones reference. Winter is coming to Green Bay, and like and then you can see a crossed out Lambo. Put in Justin, added the S. It's pretty, pretty witty, clever, pretty, pretty witty, pretty yeah. witty. And uh, so, as I was uh, overlooking the uh, the stadium, I decided to uh, to tape this under a table somewhere on the club level. I guess you could call it. I don't know what they would call it. Where all the boxes are. So it's very possible that someone uh, will be enjoying a Packer game and. They'll drop a nacho on the floor and they'll look up and they'll see like what what is this? And you know, I don't wanna I don't wanna make any big claims, but I will say the day after I taped that and hid that in oh. Lambeau Field, oh. Aaron Rodgers announced that he had COVID nineteen. Now we so. don't wish that on anyone. No, I, I didn't I didn't like, mean that. I no. Didn't, I, I didn't know the power. Oh. That I had unleashed with this little little prank. Um, the timing is notable. But uh, <laughs> but no, we did we did share. We do have a a friend of ours who works in the Chicago Bears organization, uh, who will remain nameless. But she passed our little hijinks uh, up the ladder, up the ladder as yeah. it were. And uh, I still have hopes. She said <laughs> she said that maybe she could pass the picture on to. Uh, Justin, we don't little, know that that happened. Picture. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're like a week away 
for me and Justin being best friends. Wow. That's, I, 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 How does it escalate to best friends? I was I was thinking maybe he would just find it out. A, it. I've got a lot of different like paths <laughs> to that. It's all it's underway. It's, it's underway. Um, but one of the things that this person who works for the Bears got us these these pretty nice shirts and sent along some bear swag for our kids, which we really appreciate. So thank you for all the fun goodies that you sent along. Ben's first Bears hat. Yeah. Oh, he was excited. Oh, my goodness. And, but I actually Rob was very excited too. So anyway, so, thank yeah. you, thank so you for putting up for this ridiculousness, Packer fans. No one's getting fired. This is all we have. This is all, <laughs> this is all we have. So <laughs> no one is getting in trouble here. This is just all you know. This is a rivalry, and you know we are reminded by many people here in Wisconsin that the Bears is not the Packers' biggest rival. You know, you in Minnesota know. It's a big deal up there, yeah. too. So. And everyone knows that the Lions are not a threat to anyone. Oh. <laughs> so. And they know. Stacey. Where's Hi. the lie? Where's uh. the lie? Uh, anyway, let's move on. <laughs> All right, you guys, winding down. We were talking with Stacy Nato uh, today, who has been a spokesperson for Dove. And I was curious if adultitis was a national spokesperson. Like if just, mm. you know, a personified version of adultitis was a national spokesperson, what brand or product would it be for? Mm. So come at us with your best uh, responses and what can they win, Kim? Oh, yes. Oh, boy. I didn't have it ready. Our, yep, we have these handy-dandy little uh, $10 gift cards to the Lemonade Sand, which are very hap- uh, helpful this time of year, especially with yes, the auction coming yes, up. Um, and the calendars are winding down. Um, we are definitely going to sell out of those sooner than ever mm-hmm. before. So if you have not grabbed your calendar or 10 or 20, which means you get 60% off, um, grab them because honestly, I think they're going to be gone soon. Um, so that, what else was I going to say? That? Oh, Nick. Nick was our winner last week. Oh. Nick Wesson. Um, was our winner from Texas. So congratulations, Nick. So we got here. Uh, They're coming in fast and furious. Mary Beth says the IRS. (laughs) Oh, that's perfect. Uh, Let's see. Paul, uh, done this before? Still preparation H. Oh, did we do something similar? I've done uh, different variations on this. but uh, um, Brand muffins. Brand muffins. (laughs) Uh, Jen, toilet brush. Yeah. How about or toilet plungers? Give yeah. me a whole bathroom set where adultitis is involved. Uh, prunes. Oh, that's prunes. good, Jennifer. Mm. Very, very serious stuff. Prunes are. Uh, yes. Not a lot of shenanigans uh, going on in the prunes. <laughs> no, that's they need to shake up. <laughs> gas X. I like that. Gas X. Oh, sure. Uh, prune juice again. Prunes. Yeah. Prune juice. Yeah. Prune pie. Is that a thing? Prune oh, pie. Is that prune like pie a and Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> Limburger covered sardines. Oh, Scott. There you go, Scott. Your grandma liked Limburger, didn't she? Yeah. 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 Rogaine. Ooh. Mm, interesting. Yeah, how about how about uh depends? Oh yeah. Know. Depends. <laughs> Propeller hats? Adultitis? I think oh, that's adultitis interesting. Would, Going the would, other way. Walk off this be like, I'm not. I'm not. The irony. Yes. Maybe yeah. just to make fun of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what other, what other good ones we got? Uh, uh, broccoli. Yeah. Broccoli. Yes. Broccoli does not get the love. It Uh, it definitely gets the love in our house. We all love broccoli, but it's marketing wise. Not good. Not not great. Jennifer prune pie, best friends with fruitcake. Yeah. It's (laughs) right in there. I love it. Stacey, how about health health care insurance? Oh, yeah. That's, that would be good. Our, uh, home warranty. That we Home bought for this house. Home warranty insurance. How about that? That has been a disaster. Oh, um, don't get us started on adult adultitis there, you guys. That would be a prime Ooh. sponsor. For yeah. That. Uh, We're not naming names, but I have a feeling they're all terrible. How about uh, tofu? Yeah, tofu? I'm with you, Helen. Or not Brussels sprouts. Got to do a whole, whole vegetable uh, texture. prunes, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, beets Be- for Kim. Oh, beets. Canned beets. <laughs> beets, the official vegetable of adult Just item. take your heart out, slice it up, and that's a beet, you know? <laughs> uh, re- reverse mortgages, uh, password uh, protection service. This is good. Uh, this liver. Is, I like the 
creativity. You guys, if we did do this earlier in Ooh. some form, you're taking it to the next level tonight. Liver, so, the other you. really dark red meat. Ew. <laughs> Ew. Uh, oh, I missed uh, <gasps> certain politicians. Ooh, we got, yes. uh, where was it? Oh, Brenda. Can I say long all term? politicians? I would like to say yeah. all politicians. You, you could <laughs> I'm an equal I'm opportunity definitely be majority. disliker. <laughs> uh, long term care. Oh, uh, plant yeah. plant based burgers. Oh, have you, we I haven't tried one of those. They say they're really yeah. They say you like can the pull Impossible it off. Burger and the, I haven't tried Chris, one yet. I would love to know if Kristen's tried one because I know it's it's hard enough to get a veggie burger just in general, but the plant like I think they're they're trying. Yeah, well, trying. some people swear by them. I know yeah, some people swear at them. So well, swear at them. <laughs> as is the case with our interview shows, this was a, this was a longer one tonight. So thanks for sticking with us all the way to the end. We do hope you will uh, make a chance to join us next week, uh, Wednesday night, November seventeenth at seven forty-five p.m. Uh, for Gallery Night. It'll be right here on Facebook. Go to facebook.com/slash Escape Adulthood, and uh, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be fun. There's gonna be yeah. some fun surprises and. Uh, might be a good night if those of you regulars, um, we love you guys, you know, maybe email a friend or a sibling or someone you know who needs a little pick-me-up and say, hey, meet me online. We'll chat about it as we watch, you know, or if you can have them over, um, even better. But it's a good night to invite someone to join you. I definitely think it's going to be a night that might surprise you. So, yeah, I hope so. I hope yeah. it'll be some good, uh, good, uh, good night of hope. So join us for that, and uh, that is it for this show. Until next time, Adult Itis Fighters. Shine on, spread whimsy, and be awesome.